Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the September 22, 1999 scheduled meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. First item on the agenda is comments and approval of the previous meeting's minutes. Members of the board, we have an item on the consent agenda this evening concerning Portland Cellular Partnership Site Amendment. Existing outdated antenna. Is there any as to whether we should remove it or do I have a motion to approve it as written? Mr. Emery? We did mail out notices for this item, and what we did is we wrote a custom notice, and it is on the second page. Uh, there was a specific line. Board care of the town planner requesting that a public hearing. Thank you. I have no further comment. I'll read this just for the public. The Portland Cellular Partnership is requesting a de minimis amendment to a previously approved site plan to replace three. Section 19. We have a motion before the board. Do we have a second? We have a motion in the second. Is there any further discussion on the matter? Those in favor, please signify by raising your right. All those opposed, it is unanimous. Thank you. First item under old bill. You just give us a quick overview as to where we stand today. As you may recall, my name is Helen Muther, and I are the principals of 1231 Associates, the applicants for the restaurant on the, known as the Scout House. Uh, we've been very fortunate to work with a variety of good consultants on this project. Uh, our engineering and surveying work was done by Deslori. landscaping and buffering. And since the last meeting, we've had an architect, Mark Singleman of Port City Architects, do a redesign of the elevations. As you may recall, you requested that we have four sided elevations now. They're in your packet, and as you can see, we have a color version here of all four sides. So we also provided you with the new grading plan and site plan, responding to the different issues of the town engineering. Agreed that we can use their parking area for overflow parking if there would be a need. 
you with a revised landscape and buffering plan. One of the changes that was made on that plan is an example of the things that we're trying to do to work with the abutters to answer any of their concerns. Paul, at this point, has spoken with all of the adjacent immediate times. We try to listen and respond as much as possible to their concerns. Uh, on the easterly side of the property, there is an existing fence, as you may recall. At the site plan, and speaking with the abutters, it was determined that if we expanded the, the fence to the boundary, that would take care of any buffering problems on this side. So we are proposing that we do that. We're showing it here on the landscape plan, although your submittal, the submittal went to you, went before the site block, so we weren't able to add it there. Also, there, we the actually we're changing. As you mentioned, the traffic study came in yesterday. Mr. Bray, traffic engineer did another survey on September 13th. And during that survey, he noted that there was actually less traffic than there was in June, and so that he stuck with his original conclusion um, that the traffic, um, as he says, the project has very limited impact on operational capacity of the town center intersection. There are a few other issues that I wanted to mention, and then I'm going to have Terry get up and, and go over briefly the whole site plan so that the public and you can see where we're at at this point. One has to do with odor. I know the neighbors have been some, shown some concern about odor. Odor is not one of the criterion for site plan review. However, we wanted to, um, to let the board and the neighbors that there would be no noxious fumes, no noxious odors coming from the restaurant. Not only are we going to be putting in a drawings, but also the only smell, if there it would be any, that we, we would assume would come from the wood brick oven, and that, if anything, would be a good smell. In terms of noise, we can't measure the noise before the operation um, begins. However, this is a permitted use in the town center district, and requirements regarding sound level and the limits to it. We must conform to that, and we plan to conform to that. In both of these instances, we're here locally, we're going to be operating, and what we hope is that if there are any concerns on noise or odor, that they, they, the people who are concerned with them come to us and we respond as soon as possible to them. Finally, there's been some concern regarding the takeout nature of the restaurant. This has kind of taken an, um, a, a, a life of its own. What we've proposed is a 40-person sit-down restaurant. This is not McDonald's. This is not going to be Friendly's or, well, I shouldn't use Friendly's, McDonald's or Wendy's. There's a 40-seat sit-down restaurant. Whatever takeout would come from that would come from whatever would normally be on any kind of restaurant of that type. I think you'll see when Terry finishes his, his discussion and what everything we submitted to you tonight that we've been responsive to the board and to the engineers and to the most extent possible, the neighbors. We feel we've met every criteria, a criterion of the site plan review, and we would greatly appreciate it if you, after the public hearing, approved our application tonight. <coughs> Terry, if you want to give an overview now, that'd be great. Thank you, Helen. My name is Terry Dewan. I'm a landscape architect in Yarmouth. And we've been working with Helen and Paul on the site plan for the Scout House. And Starting on the uh, right at ground zero, it's very informative to have the site plan be guided by the town center district standards. Uh, the town standards talk about the goal that the town has said that they want to see happen, not just in this property, but all these surrounding properties. To talk about uh, the environment in terms of phrases like an environment inviting to pedestrians, mixed retail and residential uses, uh, to serve residents, visual cohesiveness, enrichment, linkages, uniqueness, unique characteristics that the capabilities of the town center. What we've tried to do here is establish what is now admittedly a very old, tired, almost derelict building into what will very surely be a, a focal point for the, for the community. Uh, it will really add richness and life back to the street. It was really sad just driving by there a few minutes ago and and seeing the streetlights hanging over the building and seeing it just sort of 
forlorn looking back there. And knowing that, uh, once the plan is approved, the building is renovated, the additions are made, the signs are put up, the low-level lighting is put in place, it's going to take on a life of its own. The sidewalks, the, the gardens, uh, the enrichments that we're planning here are really going to bring it much to the forefront. It's going to really add something to the life of the street and really start to make the town center something the town is looking for. Um, in laying out the site, uh, the first challenge, of course, is to take the, the wooded site that you can see in the photographs here and to try and fit in the required number of parking spaces. Fifteen is required under the terms of the ordinance. And as Helen said, we've made provisions with the dental office across the street who have very generously allowed us to use uh, some of their spaces uh, for, uh, for parking primarily, we would assume, for some of the staff. But 15 is the number that we came up with under the calculation. We looked at a number of different ways to lay the parking out. Uh, we felt that the way that you see it right now uh, is the most efficient in terms of providing easy in, easy outs, preserving the trees that are out there, minimizing the effect uh, on stormwater management, uh, allowing things like uh, a no parking zone right there so cars can back in like that and proceed out so they don't have to back onto the butter's property, uh, providing access to the uh, to the uh, trash receptacle uh, enclosed by the fence in the back there uh, and just working around the trees. Um, in preserving the trees, we think we've met the ordinance requirements to break up parking. Uh, we've also met the ordinance requirement that talks about orienting parking either on the side or to the rear. Um, there really weren't too many options in developing the parking lot. I suppose we could have go on farther in this direction, but uh, at great extent, ex expense to the trees that are out there and to the grading required. Uh, we have broken it up, so there's five spaces on the side and the ten spaces in the back, plus the additional spaces across the street. Um, uh, the other thing that we have to consider in terms of the parking uh, is the guardrail. There's a, because of the grades that are out here right now, it drops off quite a bit on the northerly side of the property. The guardrail serves a double function. First of all, it protects the cars that are there if for some reason they were to roll off the slope. But it also serves as a, as a visual barrier for people who live to the north, about 250 feet or so, had some concerns about the glow of headlights at night. So we're sort of doubly protecting ourselves and themselves by installing a wooden guardrail here at headlight height to protect, uh, to block the view. We're also installing a rose, uh, a rose rugosa, which will grow up and probably be about chest height, so that'll further block the view uh, of the headlights from the people who live in the north. Um, because this is a, a town center zone, we had to take into consideration uh, the pedestrian orientation. Uh, people will be arriving by car, of course, but there will also be a certain number of people we hope will be arriving just by walking across the street from town hall or from the school or from the dentist office and other places around town. There will be a new sidewalk built along Shore Road. Um, ultimately, the sidewalk may continue on down to the corner. Uh, we don't know if that's going to happen or not. There is a, a stone wall on the abutting property which would have to be moved back or some adjustments made if the sidewalk were to continue. But for right now, we are stopping right here, starting right there, and going to the driveway. Uh, there's also a, a walkway. It'll probably be uh, either a brick or a, a interlocking concrete paver that will go from the sidewalk uh, to a, a pedestrian area, uh, a wooden deck that will go into the front door or into the side door, which is really the entrance to the, uh, to the restaurant. Uh, as you know, uh, one of the criteria in the ordinance talks about maintaining a presence on the street in the terms of a, of a front door. We are providing, as you can see, by the, the elevations uh, that are presented here, uh, there is a, uh, a front door that will be a, an operable door, but it will not be the main entrance into the restaurant. Because of the way the restaurant lays out, because of the way circulation and mechanical systems work, because of the orientation of the parking lot, uh, relative to where people will be going into the, to the restaurant, the front door is located roughly right here. Uh, people will be walking up the steps uh, onto the plaza right here into the front door, uh, or going from the cars uh, down a set of steps and then again uh, into the doorway. Uh, there is a, a group of large oak trees that you can just barely see in the photograph right here, which are preserving as part of the development of the site, acting as an overhead canopy so as people go up the set of stairs, 
uh, to the doorway. Uh, there will be this overhead, which uh, design element, this, this tree, which will really uh, act as a nice uh, transition zone be between the street uh, and the front of the, end of the, the restaurant. We, we are also encouraging people to ride bikes here. We are providing bike racks, uh, probably enough room for you know, five or six bicycles uh, to encourage more people to leave their cars behind and to take advantage of this as a true neighborhood facility. Um, Helen talked a little bit about stormwater management. Uh, as you know from reading the reports, these have been reviewed by Steve Harding. Stormwater generally flows in this direction from the paved part of the site and runs into a level lip spreader. Uh, from that point, it goes down to the north, and Steve Harding has reviewed it and found it to be uh, in compliance with the town's ordinance. Uh, exterior lighting is one thing that people always are concerned about. I and mean, if you change from a basically a dark situation to a, an actively used situation, what's it going to look like? Is it going to be you know, is it going to glow in the dark? Is it going to be overlit? Uh, the intention here is to follow the, the, the dictates of you know, less is more. Uh, we are providing lights that will be primarily uh, uh, spotlights or can lights that will be mounted on the trees. It's sort of an old-fashioned way of lighting parking lots and residential neighborhoods, but because the trees are there, we didn't feel it was necessary to put in new light fixtures uh, if we have trees that are going to serve the same function. We have provided the lighting plan that shows most of the big trees out here will have light fixtures, probably uh, between one and three fixtures per tree that will be aimed to cast a warm glow in these areas and also around the entranceway. Uh, the lighting levels will be uh, probably at the most about half a foot candle uh, going down to about 0.1 foot candle, uh, roughly about equivalent to what you find under, under a a moonlit light, a moonlit night, uh, so it will not spill over uh, onto the budding property owners. There will also be uh, uh, some lights attached to the outside of the building. Uh, we have noted that on the building elevation, although I must say that as the architects are working through the elevation, that's a detail that may get revised as we go through the final lighting design. Uh, the initial thought was to have some wall-mounted lights uh, to make sure that people are aware of the steps that you have to walk up to the, to the level of the entranceway. Um, we think there probably will still be a light uh, on the side of the building, um, and that is shown right now on the elevation drawing. Uh, in terms of signage, uh, the, uh, the sign design that we're showing now uh, calls for a V-shaped sign in back of a very large oak tree uh, next to the road. Uh, there will be uh, spotlights on the ground shining up onto the, to the sign that will be visible then from both directions. There's also a wall-mounted sign on the side of the building. Uh, both of the signs are designed as a, as a compatible unit. They're also designed to pick up a lot of the detailing in the cottage style architecture that has been developed by Port City Architecture. It should be a very attractive, very low-key uh, type of signage system. Uh, in terms of landscaping, I think that's one thing which is really going to set this apart from many of the restaurants that most people are used to. Uh, first of all, it's a, a beautiful wooded site. Unfortunately, there are some trees that are going to have to come down, but the trees that are left are going to be taken very good care of during construction. Uh, they'll be pruned up and fertilized and fed by a landscape contractor. Uh, there'll be a lot of additional landscaping as seen in the landscape plan. Uh, the Village Center Design Guidelines talks about installation of gardens between the fronts of buildings and the street to bring the building forward to act as somewhat of a, of a, of a common space between uh, the different uses on the street. We are calling uh, for what we're calling a cottage garden, sort of in the old English sense of the word, uh, that will go behind either a stone wall or a hedge or a fence that will separate uh, the public walkway from the front of the, of the building. Um, the garden serves a number of purposes. It's, first of all, the foreground uh, that people will see the, the building uh, floating in. It will act as a real nice uh, viewing area for people who are inside the restaurants. It will just be a very nice amenity for people walking by on the street. We feel it will be a very attractive addition to the landscape of this part of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, underneath the trees, where it's rather, is rather shady, we're calling for a shade garden. It's primarily hosta uh, and low-growing ground covers. Again, it'll act as a nice textural variation. There's some uh, a nice stone wall that's out there already. Uh, the plans call for that to be uh, rehabilitated somewhat, and then the accent of the plant materials on top of that. 
We're also showing rhododendrons and other shade-loving uh, shrubs uh, in, the sh in the shade under the oak trees around the parking lots uh, to provide a, a real rich type of landscape. Uh, we're also showing uh, a wooden deck out here that surrounds the existing oak tree. And then uh, what we're calling for here is probably bluestone stepping stones that will allow people to walk from the cars down to the entranceway so we don't have a, a lot of large paved areas. Um, I really cannot uh, stop before I uh, mention the screening on the back side of the property. As Helen mentioned, uh, the fence that now stops right here will be extended to the north to the corner of the property. In addition to that fencing, which will probably be a six foot high stockade fence, uh, stained or colored to resemble the fence that's out there right now, we're also showing evergreen trees that will be planted uh, to act as a further screen uh, to separate the uses over here from the abutting property owners on the right. You can see in the survey where the existing house is, uh, any cars that will be driving in through here uh, will have their headlights blocked by both the trees here as well as the, uh, the fence that will be installed. We feel that we've uh, certainly gone the distance in meeting the design uh, requirements for the town center. Uh, Helen's already talked about the architectural elevations and showing the additions that will be done as part of the renovation for the building. Uh, we feel we certainly have met the requirements for footprint, scale, height, building and parking orientation, openings, exterior materials, and landscaping and site development. And with that, I'll turn it back to the board. Thank you. Comments or questions from the board? Mr. Emery. Are, are we going to a public hearing first? I think I'd like to delay any questions until the public okay. hearing. This time I'll open the public hearing on this application. Those of the public that would like to speak, please come forward to the podium. Please identify yourself by name and your address. It appears that there's a lot of interest in speaking. You may wish to, wish to form an informal line over against my left. Well, Mr. Johnson is setting up. I just want to announce that we did have to wait a few minutes for a quorum this evening. The reason for that is the high school has scheduled its open house for parents and students tonight. And that's where some of our members are, and some may be joining us later. Mr. Johnson. Good evening. Uh, my name is Everett Johnson. I'm here with my wife tonight. We live at uh, 1235 Shore Road, which uh, abuts the, uh, the site to the uh, west. Basically, this building right here. I brought them on my own map right here. It shows Shore Road, my residence, and one property over is also my business. Basically, we've got some concerns or major concerns about the project. We can't support it the way it's, it's uh, sitting right now, primarily because from this point here, we've talked about buffering, we've talked about buffering, we've talked about buffering. There's absolutely no buffering for our residents uh, to the westerly side. Um, and that primarily has to do with these five parking spaces, which uh, are problematic for us because they're right underneath our bedroom window. We're not really looking forward to taillights facing our property. We've got concerns about these cars that are going to back out, most likely ending up on our, our lawn. Um, so that's, that's our, basically where we're coming from on, on our concerns are there's too many parking spaces. Lawn starts right at the property line. We have a deeded right away to this, what was until tonight a 20-foot driveway. Now this driveway is being called a driveway, but it really becomes a parking area once you get to this point and you have these five parking spaces. And the codes do call for both buffering and uh, uh, the issues of backing out and traffic issues when cars are coming in and there's a car backing out for, for uh, lunch and one of my customers or one of my uh, employees or one of uh, the residents at our property is trying to get in, a car is backing out. There's already uh, a huge traffic problem in the town center right now, and we just think that these five parking spaces, which weren't included in the 1992 plan that was, uh, was reviewed for the Scout House back in 92, all the parking was scheduled for one access road and parking out back. These five parking spaces are a problem, and uh, that's the major reason why we're against the project as it sits right now. 
Um, I can see buffering, I can see buffering, I can see buffering. I heard the, the, uh, the, the people speaking for the project that they've gone 99 yards. Well, they, they, didn't, they didn't count this side over here. They haven't gone the whole distance because they haven't done anything but buffering towards our residential property. The town center re requires that businesses and um, residents live in coexistence and we've got a major problem with the way those parking spaces are designed. Um, another issue that I think my wife and probably and others will speak to later, but his whole orientation towards our property and not towards the front doesn't go along with the way the town center is, uh, is uh, set up. Orientation should be to the front. It shouldn't be a facade. It should be a functional front door where people go in, not coming up the access road, parking next to the residential property, and then coming into the, to the scout house. It should be parking in the back and then coming in a front door. The whole orientation towards the Scout House development is towards the west or towards our property. And that's another problem that we have with the, uh, the development. Uh, what I've been told when I've talked with Paul four or five times is that he cannot address the buffering issue because it's not economically feasible. I'm not against a restaurant. I'm not against the a business being developed, we welcome that opportunity. We, we've rescued a couple of buildings ourselves in town center. We want to see something done, but we also don't think that this should be imposing on our private property. Um, we have a deeded right away to this 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 uh, 20 foot road here, which is now 16 feet. And if the traffic is going to be increasing, I don't really understand why the driveway is going from 16 from 20 feet down to 16 feet. I've heard that. There's a problem with an oak tree right here that they're going to lose, but they're also going to lose 14 other oak trees the way that the program is right now, the way it's being uh, presented. Um, so that's basically where, where we're coming from. Um, we're here to answer any questions about, about our concerns, but um, I'd, I guess I'd like to ask the board, what is the requirement for buffering when these cars Buffer, bump up against our residential property. And we've looked at it and the codes to us say there needs to be buffering for this driveway and it has not been addressed. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, if I may, do you have any suggestions that would meet your concerns? Well, I've talked with uh, the, the police department and uh, from what they tell me is that they understand that there's a stacking problem. but. Uh, I don't know if he's made any reports to you folks, but I say, I think that the five parking spaces need to be put out back. Uh, and if that means this decking area needs to go, then it needs to go. There's just simply too much being trying to be done on this narrow little lot. Um, I grew up in this town. I know this intersection very well. Uh, it is not going to work long term the way this is set up right now. And I guess what I would like to see is these five parking spaces be oriented closer to the building, like my business has to be, like Balfour, like all the other uh, businesses in the town center, the parking is up close to their own property, not out as far out as away from it as you can get. So I guess, or not guess, I strongly feel that these five parking spaces need to be put someplace else and that we be protected you know, and be buffered from. When I've talked with Paul, uh, a couple other things that, that uh, uh, I'd just like to get answered. I've been told there is takeout, and that there's going to be a lot of it, and there's going to be a lot of traffic coming in and out of here at lunchtime and at, at, at uh, uh, normal times when business get, when a restaurant's busy. And the first place they're going to go is right into those five parking spaces, and they're going to be backing out and coming in when my customers and tenants and uh, uh, residents people are going to be coming using the same access road. Uh, parking across the street at Dental Associates. Um, I'd like to know if that's deeded parking, what happens if this property gets sold. Um, those should be deeded parking spaces, not just simply, it's okay to use them whenever you want to. Uh, it needs to be deeded, it needs to be uh, passed on to future owners. Um, whatever is decided tonight is going to affect my house, which was built in uh, 1873, and my other business, which was built in 1900, forever and a day. They're, they're very, very close. It's a very difficult area, and I just think that those five parking spaces are just too much. Thank you. Next, please. 
Good evening. My name is Colleen Myers, and I'm a resident at 19 Ivy Road here in the Cape. And I just wanted to come out tonight and say how excited I am about the prospect of this restaurant opening up in Cape Elizabeth. I think this is the kind of thing that our community really needs. And from what I've um, heard about the plans, it seems to be very tasteful and um, a useful addition to our community. So I just wanted to say I hope it's built. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Townsend, and I live um, in the property right here. And I guess I just have a few questions and concerns um, about um, buffering and parking. Um, I appreciate the fence um, going down here, um, and I think that will help. But um, I'm I'm wondering if we can have, it, well, number one, will that be a contingency to this whole process? And number two, if what the recourse is going to be if it doesn't solve the buffering problems, if we still have headlight wash, um, is it possible to extend the fence this way? Um, and um, also, as far as parking goes, how many spaces um, does the dentist have to offer? Does anyone know? You know? When you're finished, I'll see yeah, if I can get that question answered for you. Um, because as far as I saw, it's three. Um, and that's, uh, that's not a lot of spaces. And, um, I would also suggest that those be deeded. Um, because our, par our, our driveway runs right here. And that, that'll be the first place people go to you know, try and find extra parking, I would guess. Um, so I, I think those are my two main concerns. And also, um, I'd like to know what sort of recourse we have in the future. Um, because some of the problems, you know, are sort of, we won't know until the restaurant is built, like what the noise level will be, if there is a problem with trash smell, um, and those sorts of, of problems. Is there any recourse that we'll have, or is it a done deed at that point? Because, um, you know, I, I think we have to protect our our quality of life and our um, our children's bedrooms are all in the front of, of the house. We have three children, and um, you know if there's noise out in the parking lot until 10 o'clock at night in the summer, or if they decide you know if you decide to put um, seats out on the deck and dining out on the deck in the summer, that will certainly affect um, our privacy and the quality of our life. And so. Uh, you know, I'd like for those things to be addressed or those questions to be addressed, if I can. If someone can answer this who's from, you know, who's from the restaurant or if the planning board can. What I would like to do is have the public speak and raise any questions they have, and then the applicant will be having an opportunity to answer them. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Linda Johnson. Um, Ever Johnson's aforementioned wife, uh, and uh, we do live in these uh, brown tan boxes over here to the west of this project. Um, I listened with interest to um, uh, this gentleman's presentation and uh, couldn't couldn't help but um, latch on to a couple of things um, that were said uh, before getting on to some other points. Um, once again, the, uh, the front door, that issue seems to have been fogged over, but I think what we're hearing, and I'd like to know in no uncertain terms, is that it is not an entrance. If I was to walk to that front door and try to enter the restaurant, I will not be getting into the restaurant from that door. I'd like to know if that's the case or not. Um, it would seem then that the main entrance is facing our property directly with little or no buffering uh, between uh, folks entering and leaving that restaurant and, and me sitting on my porch uh, or trying to enjoy uh, what's left of my yard over there. Uh, I can tell you that my husband's Yankee walk watching in his uh, underwear will also be prime entertainment for these folks. Uh, there's nothing here that allows us any privacy from the use uh, of this property. Uh, as far as no noxious odors, we're really not worried about noxious odors. We're just worried about odor. Um, it, you know, the rest of us tend to cook 
three times a day. This is something that's going to be going on all day long. Uh, the folks in Hershey, Pennsylvania uh, wouldn't call the odor they smell. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about, noxious either. Uh, but a lot of people move away because of it. They really can't stand it after a certain amount of time. So again, this is a, a project a food business wedged in between uh, residences where there are kids and people um, who are at home and who are trying to enjoy their property. Um, we've, we've heard um, that if more parking were put over to this area, it would mean a great expense uh, to trees. And we wonder if four, the 14 trees that are coming down, mature oak trees, is that small change. Um, it, there's a, a more scrub stuff over in that area. It would simply be more expensive to uh, pave and make parking out of that area. Um, let's see, what else? Um, they're talking about this uh, business being a focal point and, uh, and an area of enrichment. Um, look, we have two businesses or two buildings in the town center. We're, we're trying to be the embodiment of um, the town center plan, which is uh, the harmonious um, coexistence between uh, business and residences. We've been before you guys a whole bunch of times in the process of reclaiming those buildings over the years. We've tried to um, enhance without changing the character of those buildings. Unfortunately, we've had to uh, put in a lot of parking spaces and things like that to promote uh, or to um, um, uh, go along with the, the needs of modern business or whatever, having to have uh, parking. So we understand that. Um, we really feel this project is too big for this particular site. Uh, Mr. Woods may have a right to put a restaurant there. We're not thrilled about that, but he might have a right to put it there. He doesn't have a right to this restaurant. We feel this is too big. And if it means that he has to move parking places so that we have buffering between a business and a residence, so be it. Figure it. Go back to the drawing board. Look at all these drawing board people and figure out a way to do it or reduce the size of the restaurant. Uh, I'm sure it's going to look great. Nobody would like to see that mess cleaned up more than we were. We, we do. Because guess why? We look at it all the time. And what we get to look at now may be some pretty flowers, but a whole lot of gone trees and the rear ends of five cars parked along the side of our property. Um, we feel that that's uh, too much of an imposition for uh, anyone to ask of anyone. Um, we've put a lot of time, effort, a great deal of expense into our properties. We intend to be there and let our kids worry about what to do with those two white elephants. Um, we intend to be there until we end up at the Viking. Um, right now, we, we took out a driveway. The town wanted us to take out. And we agreed to share this driveway with, all, with the three properties. As a result of that, um, we feel like um, if this is passed the way it is, uh, it's to our great detriment. Uh, we might as well, you know, put up a 16-foot fence and put the driveway back in between uh, 300 and, and 1235. I'm sure we'll probably have more to say later, but thank you at this point. Yes, Nancy? Um, Mrs. Johnson, <laughs> sorry to make you go back. I think you said you share the driveway with three parties. Mm -hmm. Who is the third? Um, the uh, white building next to our building, which we also own. Okay. Uh, but that has a business. Um, so it has employees, it has customers, and there are two residential apartments. Uh, so that's the existing traffic is already for one business and several residences uh, and customer flow coming in and out. And where do the, the residents park, the two? In the parking that we provide on our property. We have the requisite number of spots for 
residences, uh, the business, and the employees. Is that by your house? It's behind your house. It, right. If you, you come up the driveway and parking starts here, and then there's some that's over here by the white building. Altogether, okay. I think we have 15 spots. All, okay. Sorry. All sorry. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Any, any others? It's not. Good evening. My name is Jim Burke. I'm in the butter uh, in this area to the east of the property. Uh, we, I have, uh, my wife and I have the same uh, concerns that our neighbors do. Uh, a lot of, all of them have been uh, mentioned here tonight. We, we just feel that the, the uh, proposal is just too small for the lots. We have a, uh, a concern about parking congestion. It just seems, even though with the, with the sites across the street, the easy thing would be to try to go into this area. This, our driveway is right about, right about here. Um, and, the, and again, the odors. The, quite often, the prevailing wind is right east to west, or west to east, right into our driveway. As they said about Hershey, it, it does wear on here after a while. Um, and also, we have some concerns. That, this is a fine design, and they're trying to do the right thing, but uh, restaurants are notorious for uh, not staying in business, and we kind of look to the future to see what may be done tonight, may be cast in stone forever, and I think that's a, a big concern. So uh, these are our concerns. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Steve Notice, uh, 1229 R Shore Road. I live <clears throat> right in the back on the north. Um, the issue for me has been around light wash. And I understand that uh, shrubs and a fence will be going in. But my question is, in the future, if those shrubs die, then what happens that we're open to that issue? The other concern I have, too, is with parking across the street. <clears throat> I've lived here seven years now, and it's not uncommon for me to pull up my driveway and to have cars coming around this corner in Shore Road, which is kind of a blind corner, going about 45 miles an hour, and uh, being very careful there. And if we're having people walking back and forth in the evening, and if this ends up getting a liquor license, I think we're opening up ourselves to some problems in this corner because with pedestrian traffic in the, late in the evening, people do come very fast around that corner. I think you all know what I'm talking about at that point. So those are. Those are two concerns that I have. One is around safety and with pedestrians, and the other one is what kind of recourse we might have in the future um, if the buffering doesn't work. Everett Johnson, I'm just back for one, one quick thing. Um, on the uh, parking issue that uh, uh, Nancy asked my wife, uh, we own these two buildings right here, this one and one over here. There's a deeded right of way that goes right up here and around and services both this one and this, th my business. The parking for the business is in back, next to Jonesy's garage is, mm -hmm. is the better way to look at it. Mm -hmm. And in 92, we did address buffering issues there. We put up a fence, we put up flowers, we put up uh, a couple of trees, and, and that was buffering up against another commercial business, a garage, a gas station, and really the back side of that, that gas station. So we have buffered all of our parking spaces. The ones to the north side go to the church property, and it's all, there are, there are woods, and there's, there's really no danger of headlight wash or anything on, on these ones, and the cars face, face Shore Road. What, uh, um, so in terms of, you know, we're on that corner too, We've come before you, we've closed a driveway and agreed to go along with this, this one access where it's actually four lots. There's the one on the corner next to Jonesy's, there's our residence, and this is actually a double lot. And that one driveway um, was to service those four lots in the corner. And what that effectively did from 92 on was take all parking, and there used to be parking for sheer 
uh, madness, the, the hair cutters right in the middle of the intersection, and we agreed to move everything to the back. We, at that time, we asked the board if we could have one parking space down front on the side of our building, and we were told that we couldn't, that basically we needed to put green area there, we put a garden in there, and we dressed up the front of the building, but it would have been nice at that point to have a drop-off area for parking. But we did, we closed that down, and all, all access for those four lots, really forever and a day, is going to be this little turnpike, this little row here. And it's being called the driveway, but it's not a driveway if there are five parking spaces there, and they need to back off, and uh, uh, I just want to clarify that one point, and, and one other issue that we're, we're also very concerned about is that cars that come up here on the 15th one, if they forget to go to the dentist's office, we're concerned they're going to end up on our property also. There's no gate there. There's really, it's sort of pretty open. One, one goes to the right, one goes to the left. We're hoping there's going to be some kind of signage up here, but we're concerned about overflow parking ending up on, on our area also. And restaurant being breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we're concerned that uh, you know, this could be starting from morning, noon, and night until 11 o'clock at night when this, is, this, is, uh, this closes down. We're also concerned about the dumpster. Uh, when the truck comes in, uh, usually they come early in the morning. How are they going to get in here and turn around and do that quietly without waking everybody up? Uh, that's an issue that uh, we'd like to have addressed also. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Carl Pearson, 8 Russet Lane. Uh, I'm speaking tonight on behalf, actually, as a chairman of the trustees of the Cape Elizabeth United Methodist Church. Um, first of all, uh, I uh, empathize, I guess, with this whole process. Uh, I was actually sitting with Maureen uh, O'Meara on the original town center plan, so I'm very familiar with what went on with that whole process when I was on the town council. And, uh, and I don't think, you know, as Mr. Johnson said, no one's opposed to the restaurant as a restaurant. It's a great idea, you know, so keep that at least one pause in there, right? Um, but as a trustee to the church, the biggest issue, and actually it was brought up several times here, in fact, three separate instances, one is that there's a steep grade to the north of the parking lot uh, that's going to have a guardrail to prevent wash, uh, headlight wash. The second time it was brought up is stormwater is okay for the ordinance, uh, and in the original report, I think that the trustees received, it says that there's a minimal impact of stormwater runoff because that particular uh, topography is already very ledgy. Uh, and then there was brought up at least 14 large oaks, which I imagine oaks drink a lot of water, especially at that size. Um, so our biggest concern uh, at the church uh, are twofold. One. Uh, one is we do own the parsonage, and Steve Notice is our reverend who lives down that parsonage, so obviously his comfort and concerns are ours. Uh, but the stormwater runoff is already a wet area down by the church, which in the spring rains, and if we have some excessive snows, uh, also uh, cause quite substantial problems with runoff down off here and then down the hillside. Uh, so that would be one of our concerns is, although the engineers say that it's a minimal impact, uh, I didn't hear anything addressing the fact that when you plow a parking lot like this, most of that snow would be plowed back in this area, thus spring runoff. Uh, so we're very concerned with what the impact is. There is a pathway from the parsonage here to the church, which we have to constantly build up in the spring. Uh, so that's an issue that I don't know if there's an escrow account that can be uh, put into effect uh, based on once you pave a, even a ledge area with asphalt, it does increase the runoff. And if it's all oriented towards that north end anyways, which is where the water already goes, it's just going to exacerbate that. Uh, so we're very concerned about that. We want that issue addressed either now or future impact, uh, be that an escrow account or something set up with the town, uh, having overseas powers. I know that that was done at uh, Dyer Pond with the uh, spillway there where it was... Uh, Provisions made, I believe, by the developer and since taken over by the town, certain funds available. So that's one of our biggest concerns. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. My name is uh, Steve Hill. I'm a resident of 12 Hill Way, a longtime resident of the Upper Village. I can remember my seventh grade basketball banquet at the Scout House. It was a highlight early in my life. 
I'm also a member of the Cape Elizabeth United Methodist Church, an active member there, but I'd just like to stress that I'm not speaking on behalf of the church tonight. I also t like to tell people that I taught the town planner how to drive, but I hope no one will hold that against me, certainly. <laughs> I would be the last person probably in the world to be opposed to a restaurant. I think in some respects there are so many restaurants, so little time. <laughs> <laughs> but I do hope that this I do hope that this isn't as some people have asked too much for this particular site because I am particularly aware of the impact that it will have on the four or five families that have come before you tonight um, it seems like it has the distinct potential to really impact their quality of life and it's nice to speak about this restaurant as being a good thing if you live over off Shore Road or over on Mitchell Road or down in Broad Cove. But I think we need to think particularly, and this group seems to have a supreme responsibility, to think about the people who live in the area very close to the restaurant. I would, too, raise some of the concerns that those people have raised. I think it's incumbent upon this board to make sure that problems with any runoff that would run to the north where the land goes, where our parsonage is for the Methodist Church, that those be addressed. Issues of light pollution. We mentioned several bedrooms that are fairly close to this property. Um, living right in the center, I know that the center glows at night. And this would be just another area, more additional lights. My bedroom is right next to the light of the flagpole in front of the Pond Cove School. It's a wonderful patriotic gesture, but it's very difficult some nights in the summer to get to sleep with that light glowing right in your window. I hope that problem wouldn't be repeated for these people. I always wonder when businesses say there'll be no impact on traffic, it always seems ironic that a business guarantees you there'll be no more traffic. Isn't that the idea, to increase traffic to one's business? That is a particularly troublesome intersection. I think many people know that. Quiet is a fleeting commodity in our world. And restaurants with comings and goings, business as you will, are bound to create noise. I think that's something that has to be addressed, again, to the people whose quality of life will be affected potentially by this establishment. I like the smell of pizza as well as an espresso, but I wouldn't like to smell it all day, seven days a week. I don't know if that's a legal issue. I had referred to earlier that it's not. But I think that's something that would impact the quality of life on the neighbors here. Trash control and disposal are always issues for restaurants. I think it would be incumbent to make sure those are well taken care of. So it just seems to me that while a restaurant may indeed be legal and proper and maybe even desirable in this space, that the board has to guarantee that all the necessary steps are taken. I know I've watched you many times on TV. Other proposals in this area have had to jump through numerous hoops, and eventually they just seem to go away. I hope the same scrutiny is given to this proposal, since it will impact the quality of life of so many of its neighbors. Thank you. Millie Vetterlein, Canterbury. I am very supportive of something like this restaurant in a place in the town center. Um, I am very sympathetic to the five car parking situation. But I think that is the real problem. And to speak about noise and odor and light, when the Johnsons have never had any complaint about something as active as Jonesy's station. I think those are issues that, um, you know, really are not as important as the parking. And if the parking could be altered, um, I would hope that that would meet with their satisfaction. I would also like to know what the exact hours of the restaurant will be, because I think that would clarify some of the light and noise issues, too. Thank you. Good evening. 
My name is John Gendron. I'm a resident of Cape Elizabeth. I live at 16 Hunts Point Road out in Broad Cove. Um, I think this is an excellent plan. Um, I think it fits nicely into the neighborhood. Um, I think it will do nothing but to increase property values uh, in the neighborhood and, and for our butters as well. Um, I heard tonight uh, someone mentioned that they've been looking at this mess for a long time. I've been a resident of this town for many, many years, and I too feel that you know, I've driven by that mess long enough. Um, I was going to call it an eyesore before I heard the other term used tonight. Um, I too sympathize with the uh, abutters who have concerns, um, rightly so, and I think um, you have provisions in your ordinance that can address those concerns um, to make sure that uh, those abutters are protected and, and to also ensure that we see the uh, private sector uh, participate in this visionary plan that the town of Cape Elizabeth came up with for the town center. We've seen a lot of the public money spent and we're now enjoying the benefits of those improvements. And as the Johnsons have done, I think this is the next logical step in seeing more private sector development. So I urge you to approve this project. Are there other individuals who would like to speak during the public hearing? <coughs> hearing none, I'll close the public hearing at this time. Maureen, would it be appropriate if I asked the applicant to come forward to answer some of the questions that were raised? Would the applicant like to answer the questions that were raised during the public hearing? I think I gave, kept track of it, and we'll try and do our best. Um, I'll talk about some of the ordinance questions that were raised, and then Terry will talk about uh, the reasons for the layout the way it is and, and why it needs to be that way. And then Paul um, can talk about the use of the restaurant um, regarding takeout and app hours, and also the dentist parking area. I think that hopefully will cover it. Uh, first of all, history-wise, um, from what we understand happened from looking at the record in the, in the planning office and trying to understand a way to make a harmonious layout of this really unique situation, as the Johnsons referred to earlier, the driveway is on um, the, our, our property. And when they proposed um, some changes back in 92, 93, an easement was granted by the owner at that time, the person from whom we bought the property, Mr. Vigilio. The easement says that they have a right over the existing property. It doesn't define the width, excuse me, the existing driveway. It doesn't define the width of that um, driveway. And it also says that, well, we are able to relocate it if, if we so choose. In any case, um, the portion that is existing now that's on our property is 16 feet approximately wide and that's why we suggest that the driveway should stay at 16 feet wide because if we go any farther this oak will have to be removed that's a trade-off um, to society what i understand also from looking at the record back in um, 1993 they didn't go forward with some of the expansion that they had proposed originally and then in um, january february of 99 the johnson's came back to you to do, I don't know if it was called minor modification, whatever, they had to get a, some um, setback changes with the Board of Appeals and then proceeded to construct a very nice looking extension that's about 2,000 square feet on the rear of their building and adding the additional, um, and confirm, conforming all the additional parking so that, as they said, if you include, um, I believe there's 14 parking spaces that were approved plus the drive, the garage, so you have around this entire area, 14 parking spaces. And that was just occurred, all of this um, improvement here is just now being finished up. And I know it's supposed to be frustrating for them to hear me define what they did on their property. I'm just doing it from what I've read on the, in the um, town um, record. But in any case, what it does is to me, it emphasizes how each property owner has to try to, to make this a harmonious situation. Um, 
when we realized that this is the way, it was the entrance way that was going to have to occur and that we were going to need to have this parking to make anything viable in the space, um, Paul did talk to the, um, the Johnsons. We tried to make some changes, such as make, emphasizing this area here, having um, a sign here saying no restaurant parking on this side. Paul also um, offered and suggested that there's some kind of buffering occur here. I know that they are already considering a stone wall here, suggested putting bushes or trees, something in that area, to, although it would have to be on their property that we could do, and they were um, not interested in doing that. Again, we'd be happy to discuss some kind of fencing or anything in that area on their property at our expense um, if, that, if that would be doable. Um, in terms of, of the buffering on that side, I know it must be frustrating to see it all the way around here, but not here, but it's the um, inherent nature and history of the two properties together. In the ordinance under N, which is the landscape and buffering, in fact, it says that you're supposed to have a visual barrier of not less than six feet in height along the exterior lot lines of, a resident, of adjoining all residential properties, except that driveways shall be kept open to provide visibility for vehicles entering and leaving. So we feel there's no violation of the existing ordinance um, to have that, uh, to have it situated as it is. But again, we'd be willing to do anything on their property that they feel would help the situation. In terms of the front door, we feel that this front door and the layout as it is completely conforms with the town center and the, and the design that was um, suggested throughout the town center process and which ended up in the ordinance. The front door is usable. The front door will be there as an entranceway. But if you look at the brief interior design that we had the architect do, it shows that, there's the, the, that the, there is an entranceway here. For safety reasons, for flowage reasons, in terms of all the interior, it makes sense to have the, the major, the, or emphasized entranceway here. This is very, very close to the street. I think you should think back to when you were over there at the site walk. This means like a very large area, but in fact, it's not at all. So what the town center design requirements say that the front facade of the structure should face the tr street. And that's what we tried to emphasize. to show, as you can see, how it existed, exists now, and that front facade retaining the same. The front facade will have a distinctive entrance, although secondary entrances are permitted on the side of the building. Again, we feel like we've conformed in all those ways. In terms of the future, I think someone like Maureen's going to be able to answer this better than I can. I'm not sure what kind of performance guarantees would be put on this, put on this project, um, but I know from um, my own experience and as an attorney having to represent other people who violated um, their site plan requirements, um, the town is very, very diligently um, goes after those people to make sure that um, all, all, everything conforms as is. One can't make a um, planning board decision on the fact that we may fail in doing that. Um, um, but nonetheless, we have no problem with the condition being that the, that the fence goes up along the side, and that has to be a condition of the ordinance. And of course, we will um, abide with any kind of performance guarantee that would be required. Um, Terry, you want to go over some of the layout issues before Paul talks about the restaurant? We heard a number of speakers talk about stormwater runoff, and I know that early on there was several discussions with members of the Methodist Church, and the engineers took great pains to make sure that the system was designed to meet the requirements. In fact, it was over-designed. Uh, can't take our word for it, though. You know, we work for them. Uh, I'd like to think, though, that Steve Harding, who is the town's engineer, would be the final, final word here. Let me just quote, maybe the people in the audience have not seen the letter from Steve Harding. Um, he does say that the, the ordinance states that for major developments, the proposed stormwater runoff systems will detain runoff from the site so that the rate of flow does not exceed the peak, development, peak rate of runoff. The submitted calculations do indicate a minimal increase in the peak rate of runoff, we do concur with the applicant's consultants, however, that this runoff does, does appear to be a minimal increase, and the level spreader will act to mitigate the increase. We recommend that the board support the project stormwater management plan as presented on the submittal drawings. 
We've taken great care in developing a plan to make sure that this area is not disturbed. We've added additional trees out there. Um, someone suggested that uh, by removing the trees that are out there, we're going to lose some of the ability of the trees to take up the water. Um, I don't know if that can be measured or not. I just know, though, that the, the land surface right now is a very rocky one, and uh, it does shed a lot of water in its present conditions. If there are technical questions to be addressed to the engineers, they are here tonight to, to talk about some of those more technical aspects of the plan. Um, a couple of other points that were raised, someone talked about light pollution. One of the, the uh, advantages of using the system that we're uh, proposing right now, namely having can lights or down lights suspended from the trees, is the ability to aim the lights. And what we would suggest that once the lights are installed, that we bring the neighbors out there at night. Uh, make sure they're, they're, they're aimed properly if they have any problems. From their windows, from their backyards, they can be adjusted to make sure there's no problems. And I like to think that that's the same sort of cooperative attitude that we can use to solve additional problems that may arise during the course of this discussion. Uh, the layout of the parking lot, as we've heard, uh, has been probably the most uh, controversial aspect of the plan. Um, as Maureen, as uh, Helen said, you know, we do have the ability to begin working cooperatively with the Johnsons to put a, f a, f a fence on the left side of the, uh, the driveway should come in. Um, it could be done either just as a fence or it could be done in combination with a, a low stone wall, uh, this being the, the, the uh, lawn right there, so you could have a fence that may be six feet or eight feet high that would effectively block the view of most of the part of these five parking spaces from the residential area um, of the Johnson's home. Uh, you probably would still have the one parking space visible, but that would be visible primarily from the garage area, um, which I don't believe is a, a, a residential part of the, the home. Um, the design of the parking lot was examined from a number of perspectives. Um, as I said earlier, uh, we looked at extending it off to this direction, maybe adding two more spaces, but uh, we had to do, to do several things. First of all, we had to locate a dumpster on the site, and this is certainly the most convenient place, uh, the most functional place in terms of dealing with the, the kitchen waste and not wanting to bring it through the parking lot to someplace else. We wanted to locate the dumpster in a place that was out of sight. It would have been very easy to put the dumpster right here, and very convenient for the truck to come in here and load right here, but you know, who wants to see a dumpster as you come in off the street? We felt that that was probably the, the most, uh, uh, the optimal part of the site uh, in terms of uh, uh, waste handling. The other thing that we had to look at, of course, was uh, how cars that are parked in these last couple of spaces are able to turn around. You always have to have back out spaces. Usually that space should be about the equivalent of the length of a car, about 15 to 20 feet. That's what we're providing right here is the cars in that space can turn around here and then come out. If those spaces went all the way to the end here, cars would not be able to back out. They'd probably have to do this back in under the private property to come out that way. Uh, we also looked at other arrangements of the parking lot. Uh, I didn't bring along any alternative sketches. We had some that came across as a big crescent like that, but it seemed like uh, just given the, the rectilinear nat nature of the other land uses in the area, the parking lots that respected the orientation of buildings and roadways, driveways, and so forth, would seem to be the design that worked out the best. Uh, the big crescent-shaped parking lot that we had that came through here uh, just didn't seem to work, and I don't think would have achieved the, the results that we've been able to achieve right here. So in summary, I'd like to think that we do have the ability to add some additional buffering along the property line. I think that will go a long way to meeting the Johnson's concerns for the, uh, the development of the property. Snow removal has been talked about. Um, uh, the, the primary way that we're going to be uh, handling snow, you know, snow will be pushed off in this direction, uh, down into the, uh, the, the planted areas. Uh, snow will also be pushed off in this direction, down to the love lip spreader. And again, as the snow melts, we'll go into the stormwater system. And that's been taken into consideration as part of the stormwater management plan. Good evening, my name is Paul Woods. I am one of the applicants. And one of the um, questions that was raised 
uh, were ours. Um, what will the hours be for this restaurant? Um, I think that there has been some certain level of misunderstanding that it's going to go between 4 in the morning and 1 o'clock at night or something like that. Uh, nothing uh, could be further from the truth. The morning hours will be primarily for coffee and um, uh, small baked goods, things of that nature. Um, breakfast will be limited. Lunch will follow on to that. And evening will be um, hours that I don't anticipate. Now, I can't say for sure, but I do not anticipate it going past 9 o'clock on average weeknights, 9 or 10. And I don't see it really going past 10.30 any day of the week. I think that that also comports with people's understanding of the nature of business here in Cape. Um, I think it is entirely consistent with what the level of activity is here in the town and what will be able to support any type of commercial venture. Um, the only exception, of course, is Cumberland Farms, and they are open quite late at night. However, as a convenience store, they don't go 24 hours either. It just is no business. Everything shuts down. This restaurant, the hours for this restaurant will be entirely consistent with what the level of business will be driven by in the town. Another question were parking spaces across the street at the dentist office. I think one uh, person questioned whether there are any more than two or three spaces. Um, there are actually 12, approximately 12 to 15 spaces at the property across the street. I'm not speaking for those spaces. Um, the owners, the dentists who own the property, they were very gracious and generous to um, propose uh, letting, letting me use that in off hours. Uh, and the spaces wrap around the back. It's actually much more extensive than first meets the eye on the uh, front of the property. Um, were there any other questions of that nature? Oh, in the takeout. Um, again, I think Helen mentioned, too, that um, there was some mis uh, misapprehension whether or not it would be like Wendy's or McDonald's or something of that nature. Absolutely not. Any restaurant... Any restaurant in any location with any type of function or menu always has a takeout element. The question is, what is emphasized? And that is not an emphasized use of this restaurant. Um, it is simply not, as you can see from the drawings and I think from the interior layout, I think that gives quite a bit of, um, quite a bit of credence to what I'm saying in terms of how it's planned. The layout of a restaurant, the... Um, the front section of a restaurant, the actual um, look and feel of a restaurant is integral to its operation. And I think the board hopefully can see that it is uh, a relatively modest 40-seat restaurant. It uses the footprint of the existing scout house primarily with slight extensions out in the back. There is an increase in the square footage, obviously. But it has the same look and feel of what the existing building is currently on site. Mr. Woods? Yes. Are the parking spaces across the street at the dentist's office going to be deeded to your business for the use? No. I, there is no agreement for deeding. Um, as, the, um, as the ordinance requires, we have the correct number of spaces for the ordinance. Our suggestion, in essence, was going above and beyond to address any concerns that may um, realistically be raised. Um, there is no deeding or any formal contract or anything of that nature. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Questions from the board? Mr. Emery. Mr. Chairman. Um, I have uh, several sort of disjointed questions, but I'll do the best I can. Um, I first of all, I want to compliment the uh, design of the building. I think it's a tremendous improvement to what we saw early on. Um, uh, before I say anything else, I think what we have here is we have the challenge of a mixed-use area uh, where we have mixed-use and shared parking, which uh, everyone, uh, when offered the opportunity to get into a shared parking situation, usually doesn't go along with it because of the issues of who's going to be in what space and, and uh, whose uh, issues of time and so forth. So um, when this 
when these two projects initially went forward before this was a restaurant, uh, this was quite a bold stroke for Cape Elizabeth and probably for many other areas. Uh, that having been said, I guess let me understand. I have sheet one of seven, which is a site plan that has it shows some existing trees, it shows grades, and it shows some layout. Um, what it doesn't seem to show is what existing trees are to be removed. Is that indicated somewhere in the drawing set that we have just received? My name is Johan Busman. I work for Deloria and Associates, and I don't believe we show those trees to be removed on the drawing. We felt that it was pretty cluttered with all the other information on that sheet one of seven. Okay, what I'll suggest then is that the uh, drawings be amended to indicate what would be typically be uh, either removals or a demolition plan that shows the existing, uh, particularly the large trees that are to be removed and any other uh, structures or those sorts of things that would typically uh, be removed. Uh, and I'm going, to, I'm going through this with a fairly fine-tooth cone because this is, uh, as was mentioned earlier, this is the town center district. Uh, we don't normally get this many people at a public hearing, so I feel at least as one planning board member we sort of have to go above and beyond. Um, one of the comments that was mentioned, uh, these drawings are much clearer, and thank you, than the ones that we originally got. It may just be that the other ones were blueprints and these are what's called clean prints or Xeroxes. But I still have trouble reading the underlying topo. Um, for example, it's washed out in the area where the proposed parking, uh, the five spaces that are in question are indicated. Uh, so um, if, if uh, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see a plan that clearly shows the underlying existing topography because there will be uh, blasted ledge required and other things like that. And to make a reasonable determination is to uh, how much of the trees that are proposed to be saved versus what the proposed contours are relative to existing grade is important to be able to see. There are a lot of uh, proposed site improvements that aren't tied to the face of the earth. Um, if I were a code enforcement officer, and I, again, this is a, a close call, but there's no dimensional uh, layout on the deck at all or on any of the walkways. Um, I don't know how far away from the walkway, from the building, uh, the walkway is, uh, for example, and I don't know how wide it is. Um, in looking at the plan set, uh, and again, I apologize for jumping around. I was away all weekend and haven't had a lot of time to go through this, but I was at the site walk, and, and I did go through the earlier set fairly carefully. As an example, uh, if you look at the utility plan, I don't remember the drawing number, but there's a large grease trap indicated um, that will be installed to the east of the building. That isn't indicated in any way on the uh, site plan. Uh, is that a large concrete vault that's essentially buried below grade? Does, does that have manholes that require coming to the surface and, and having access to uh, trucks in order to have that cleaned out? Yes, if you would, if you answer questions, if you could come to the podium. Uh, the only reason being is you're being recorded and on videotape, and we can't see you sitting in your chair. I'm Isaiah Plant from Deloria and Associates. Uh, I believe the grease trap will have two clean outs, not manhole size, roughly this size. Uh, and that is that's basically it. And, and those come to the surface? Yes, they do. Okay. Uh, I'd like to see those located on the plan and then a dashed line that indicates the area of the, of the grease trap itself. That area is shown in, on our site plans, at least in the landscape plan and in the site plan. There's no reference to it on the site plan and in the landscape plan. I believe it's just indicated as long. Yeah, we tried to do the two of them separate for mm -hmm. clarity. Yeah, I, and I appreciate that. It's a, always a close call as to what you show or don't show among different drawings. Um, I guess what I would ask if there's a clarification, if, there, if there's any restrictions to a structure that's 2,000 gallon grease trap that close to the property line, it's within, appears to be inches uh, of the property line. Um, and I'll, I'll have several comments that I'll refer to the town planner just for clarification if, if there is an immediate answer. Um, there's no um, real control of the layout of the parking lot. For example, 
Uh, I'm not real clear as to how, where that first base is located, which is um, closest to the to the road relative to the property line. Yes. Um, you, you have five spaces that are off the driveway, and the first space is clearly it's behind the 25-foot minimum setback, but there's no way of knowing where that is. And the, and the issue I raise there is if this plan eventually, when it shows existing trees to be removed or shows grading, uh, if there are fine-tuning that has to be done in the field, which usually there is, but uh, well, let me put it another way. We've just gone through uh, several planning board meetings dealing with variance issues and what the, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals has to deal with, and, and a lot of those issues arise from site plans and subdivision plans that don't have dimensions given to critical areas. For example, you have them on the building but not to the edge of the, of the paving. And again, I'm making an issue of this because keeping in mind that this is a sense of, this is one of the more sensitive issues of the plan, and I want to be sure we all know where it is on the face of the earth. So I make sure that I know what you're talking about. Um, on the plan now, it shows the 25-foot minimum setback, and it shows a line for that setback. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is you just want to know what the closest um, parking space to Shore Road, what the setback is from our property line for that? Yes, I'd like to see the whole parking lot laid out dimensionally so that... Yeah, this, of course, it, is, a it, scale, is a scale drawing. That's so you, know, you can apply an architectural or engineering scale to the drawing and get you know, within a foot of where the parking lot should be right now. The, the question that you're probably addressing is at what point does a change require a trip back to either Sea Marine or the planning board uh, if it's a de minimis change? Well, I'm, I'm just saying that I don't know where it is, and the first rule of, of drawings is never to put a scale on a drawing. Um, if the thing were to shift four feet in a, in a, in a, a tree, would it be taken out or the existing tree? Again, you've got to work with me here because um, I'm, I'm just, I want to be sure the planning board's interest and your interest are best served in, in, in however we vote this evening, and I want to be sure that, that the information is there that backs it all up, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. Typically, at this level of, of submittal, though, you don't go through the layout plan. You don't usually dimension the parking uh, lots, but that's what mm, we have. I, I won't agree with that 100 percent, but... So what you'd like to, to, what Terry's describing is the difference yes. between in site drawings, uh, we get way ahead of the rest or people who do site plans get way ahead of the rest of the design team. We have to provide an awful lot of information which anybody knows is called design development. It's almost you could almost build from drawings and certain builders like to, uh, but they're not intended to be used that way. Um, so that it, and it's a fine tune and a fine call as to what um, how much information is adequate. Um, and just for, to, excuse mm -hmm. me, just to clarify, so it's going to show, for example, the 37-foot setback, which is what it is, from the, um, for the um, parking, the first parking space. Now, it, would that also um, pertain to, for example, the deck? Do you want all the setbacks along for all the different um, structures? Well, for example, um, the impervious area is, is sometimes an issue, and I guess what I'd like to see is overall dimensions uh, for the deck area, as an example. I certainly would like to see the widths on, on sidewalks because there's a minimum width required in order to have ADA accessibility. Um, I, unless I'm missing something, I don't believe there's a dimension showing the setback of the parking lot from the rear property line. There's a, there's a line that shows um, the rear setback line. Um, Again, just so we're clear, um, there is a setback line that shows a setback from the rear property line to the building, and then to the right of that, there's a setback line showing the setback from the rear property line to the parking area. It shows the 15 rear set, 15 foot rear set. That's, that's not to the edge of the parking area, however. Uh, yeah. It, it indicates that the parking area lies beyond that, but... Yeah, about a yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay. So you'd rather have it to the property... Uh, I think both are required in the application, but you just had to be at our last two workshops and you know why I'm doing this. All set? Um, 
the retaining wall section shows, I think, what, a four or five foot high retaining wall? I won't. Uh, you may need a railing at the top of that. This, this, this is a residential area, and any, my understanding is any drop greater than 30 inches requires a, a 42 inch rail. Please. <clears throat> Uh, I believe we've addressed that. If you take a look at the cross section, you'll see we have the guardrail along the top there and then the slope, the two to one. So I don't believe that requires anything beyond what has been designed there. It's not, let's leave it up to the code enforcement officer. If I were mowing the grass there, if I were on a, on a maintenance crew and mowing the grass and I tripped at the bottom of the, sl or slipped at the bottom of the slope, there would be nothing that would prevent me from dropping four or five feet to the bottom of that retaining wall? Um, I'd have to look at the cross section to see exactly. I don't, I don't, at least from the information I see, I don't believe there is. Um, okay. Um, let's, on the issue of um, the shared driveway, the plan shows uh, the, the uh, property line. Um, with the abutters, and it shows pavement going up to the edge of that, that property line and stopping, if I'm reading the plan correctly. <clears throat> but the actual edge of the gravel is some other, some different configuration. It's like in, at the, near the front of the driveway, there's another perhaps a half a foot, and then up closer to the Johnson's garage, it gets quite a bit wider than that. And I clearly understand that's on the Johnson's property and not on your property. But I'm just wondering, where you have gravel meeting um, pavement like that, there's bound to be uh, a situation where you're getting gravel washed over and maybe erosion along the edge of the driveway. Have you discussed with the Johnsons the idea of paving all the way over to the edge or reconfiguring that edge at all? Um, I can I'll let Paul answer that because he's had the discussions with them. I will say that um, the other, the, uh, the way that we, when we're talking to the engineers, it can be conceived as that if they choose not to pave their section, it's as if it were a shoulder. It's like a, it would be in, an, in any kind of road where you'd have somewhat of a gravel shoulder on the edge okay. of the paving. But Paul, you want to answer the paving? I certainly can't speak for my neighbors, but um, I, I did, if, if, if invent this um, uh, it does become an issue, I'm more than willing to pave all the way to the property line. I can't speak for the Johnsons whether or not they would be comfortable with that. I think it would be in both neighbors' best interests. Um, but as Helen said, if in fact that small detail could not be um, amicably arranged, the curbing, the driveway would be finished in an effort to, um, to eliminate the erosion issue. Okay, thank you. Uh, the five spaces that the Johnsons are concerned about, there's nothing that shows um, how far those spaces are away from their property line. There's a 15-foot side yard setback line indicated, and I believe there's a 16-foot width of paving, and then there's an 18-foot depth of stall. But again, there's nothing that, if, if for whatever reason you decide to move that either back toward the Johnsons a couple of feet or back toward the uh, building a couple of feet, um, just so that's all nice and neat and tidy on the record. Um, with, the, with the issue of uh, lighting, Terry, I, I don't believe I have a catalog cut in my, with my materials. Maybe I do. I, I haven't found it. Uh, is there a catalog cut of the proposed light fixture? Yes, of course. Could you just pull that out and put that up on the bulletin board? That's all right. Now, if these, if these, as I understand, Terry, the way you've described these, these are sort of like cans that could be thought of as spotlights or floodlights. This is in your initial submission package. It was in Section 8. The and initial we... submission package? Volume 1 of... <laughs> Oh, well, there's the problem. <laughs> what page? Okay. It was the second page in section Thank you, eight. Okay. There's a catalog cut from the Kim Lighting Company. Yes, I see that. Okay. Mm -hmm.
In fact, this, one of the reasons we selected this particular picture is that it showed how it would be mounted on a large tree. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one thing that I've heard about lighting lately is this whole issue of the one of the most important issues with, with the issue of light trespass or the impact of lighting is that the light source not be visible. Um, the description that Terry's given of the lights being in the trees, I've seen, and it's really nice. It's sort of a warm glow of light. However, if for whatever reason those floods end up in being oriented, for example, I believe they're shown on the plan to be oriented back toward those five parking spaces. Well, sort of in both directions. If you're approaching the building and the light is almost like we're seeing here, it's, it's coming into one's eyes rather than more downward, then I, I think that's an issue. So you may end up needing more lights. I don't know. Um, generally, I, I think we like to see shielded fixtures. Uh, so that would be my only, only issue there. But I think the idea of them being in the trees, not being able to see a light pole and all that is a, a very nice approach. If you look on the third page of the chapter 8 there, uh, you'll see the beam spread of 40 degrees. And uh, it appears that the fixture will be recessed within the housing. Uh, in fact, it looks like there's a collar that goes over the spotlight to direct the beam. So uh, the, the light source itself should not be visible. It's a very direct fixture. I won't bet on that, but when, it, when it's that high, I, you know, if, if it's 10, 12 feet from the tree, I, enough said. Um, one of the US sections shows four inches of topsoil. I believe it's dealing with the um, retaining wall. You've stated uh, in your information that the soils are, the, the site is very ledgy. Um, I think it's going to be very difficult to maintain either lawn or um, plants. And to, I know the plant detail shows a, a root ball and all the rest, but I would suggest that the depth of topsoil soil not be less than six inches for that uh, very reason. Um, Uh, there was some discussion about extending the fence uh, all the way to the rear property line on the easterly property line. That would follow the property line all the way to the back. If you look at the survey plan, you'll notice that the fence is not on our property. You yeah. would have to take a little jog yeah, to go right. onto our property. So at that point, that would be on our property to the back corner. Okay, thank you. Uh, that fence is what, six or eight feet high now? The existing fence is very high. I believe it's six feet. Yeah. Uh, what is the effect of that fence going to be at the back corner? I think existing grade back there is about 105, something like that. And the parking lot is generally around 109. Is it, is, it going to, is it going to do what you're, I mean, I, I've heard concern from the abutters about light trespass through um, past the buffer toward the houses. Um, and looking at the site plan here, indeed, it looks like that corner is around 105 in the back there. If indeed it is a 10-foot fence, and I'm not sure whether it is or not, I've not actually mm -hmm. measured it, um, it would be around uh, 115, and if the parking lot's 109, and you were to add, you know, three, four feet to headlights, it seems that would be adequate enough. Okay. So your intention is to continue the same height fence all, yes. all the way down yes, the back it is. of the property line? Same height, same color. Same the, there's nothing in our package that indicates that, Maureen? That would have to be either a condition or amendment to the plan. Right. The, the uh, applicant agreed to do that as a product of the site walk, and the site walk happened after the submission of information required for this meeting. So it's not in your okay. current package. <clears throat> uh, 
One other, couple of other questions. Uh, under the hours of operation, I, and again, I know this is a first venture into this. Um, I don't believe, well, let me ask Maureen, is there anything within our town center ordinance or our zoning ordinance generally that restricts hours of operation? Uh, this has been an issue that's gone both ways in the past. And before I give you a specific answer, I, I would like to talk to our town attorney. I do know that in the past there was a time, I believe in 89, um, where the planning board established an hours of operation. And it Maureen, was, if I may interrupt. Certainly. Our tape recorder has jammed. And just so that we maintain a good public record, we're going to just stall for a minute or two. Established hours of operation for business in 1989, and I believe there was some subsequent decision that uh, the hours that the board established were not reasonable and they changed. So, before I give you a specific answer on that, I'd like to do a little more research. Uh, I guess I'd like to go and state further as a, as a planning board member, I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous, or perhaps ridiculous, to look an applicant in the eye and say, This is a great project and have a wonderful restaurant. By the way, you've got to close at 6 30 in the evening. So I think the um, – I just want to be sure that within reasonable operating hours, and I don't know what that is, to tell you the truth. I don't know if that's 10, 1030. I, I suppose if you're in either house next door, that tends to be closer to 9 o'clock than 11 o'clock. And I'm not so sure it's the, the, the patrons of the business itself. It's all the comings and goings and the, and the wheel noise and, you know, everyone wishing each other a happy uh, college after summer and all, and all those things that – uh, can be disrupting, but on the other hand, uh, in all fairness, this is a mixed-use town center concept. Um, but I, I would – the applicant indicated that the hours of operation would not seem to be longer or later than 10.30 in the evening any day of the week. Um, I would certainly uh, look to the applicant to give us some assurances. And I guess on the other side, although it's, it's uh, wonderful to have – early hours of delivery and, and trash pickup, um, some of these independent con contractors can show up who knows when, 5 o'clock, <clears throat> 5.30. I, I think that the abutters should have a reasonable expectation of what is going to be proposed here and what the hours of limitation. Let me ask another question, for example. Will this have a liquor license? First, just to back up a minute, um, we've already put on the record that the um, – that we can have trash pickup in mid-morning, that our trash people have said that they can do that. So there's okay. not an expectation of being early trash pickup. In terms of the liquor license, nothing's been determined at this time. Um, we don't know if we're going to be doing it or not. We haven't inquired about it or not. Okay. Um, will this be smoking and non-smoking? <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not, not until you get the liquor license. Um, the reason I ask that is that's an operation that, that may or may not tend to run later. It may run to 11, anywhere from 11 to 1 o'clock, but be that as it may. I just added there is no anticipation of making this a bar, if that's okay. what you're referring to. Um, the, there are notes on the plans that then give us three options at the front of the building, either a hedge, a stone wall, uh, or a picket fence. Has... I, un I understand what an 18-inch high stone wall looks like. I think I know what a hedge looks like, but do you know what type of hedge it is? Is it privet, or is there any? We, we have not gotten to the point of doing that level of fine detail yet. Okay. And uh, picket fence would be four foot high. They're about three foot high. Probably three and a half foot high fence. Picket fence, okay. Okay. 
what I was trying to uh, do without uh, playing the role of the applicant, uh, I, as the applicant, as I was, I was hearing the public concerns about the issue of the five parking spaces to the uh, uh, facing the Johnson's property, is that I was trying to think about what impact it would be to remove those five parking spaces. I don't see how they fit in the back. I mean, I just don't think that there's a there's a way of putting those in the back very easily. You might get three where the dumpster's located, uh, sort of at the dead end of that parking lot, uh, and that would leave you two more spaces to provide, plus uh, the location of the dumpster closer to the front of the, the property. Um, but as a total, uh, as a percentage of your total parking, it's almost 25 percent or thereabouts, or almost 30 percent actually of your total parking, which would mean you would have to give up about uh, somewhere around 10 or more seats within the restaurant. Uh, so that is not an insignificant uh, issue to the overall uh, program that's being presented as part of the restaurant. Um, my feeling is that it is certainly appropriate to buffer that parking. Um, and on the other hand, if the abutters, who ironically uh, and admirably have gained an easement on your property as part of the town center goals of having shared parking, can't provide uh, an easement on that on their property uh, to do that at your expense, um, then I, I don't know what where the planning board can come out on that. What we could do is re require a buffer, put the money uh, that would make up the buffer in, in escrow, and at whatever time the uh, abutters would decide to take the, uh, the money and install the, uh, the buffer. That's that's all I could see to be being done there. The idea of moving it closer to the building does little good unless the driveways move closer to the building, and I don't see the driveway moving closer to the building. Um, the issue of the main entrance being located on the side of the building, uh, that's one of those issues that will come up continuously in the town center because the town center ordinance asks that the parking be placed either in the side yard or the rear yard. Uh, and typically would then require, particularly with a small business, that you have a ceremonial front door, if not an actual front door, and a rear door. And what we constantly hear from business owners is that with small businesses, to have a single person, particularly in a retail setting, for example, trying to manage two doors is not reasonable. So it's not unusual. I, I don't see the, the fact that there's a, a door facing on the, on the long side of the building or on the side of the building to be an unreasonable solution where you have parking in the back and you have pedestrians coming from the front. I, I think that you've maintained the front door as both a ceremonial door and a functioning door is, is, uh, is a good gesture toward uh, um, at least for pedestrians uh, have, being able to come in the front. Uh, could you describe the deck to us? Uh, it says here that there are details on sheet two of seven and I don't believe there are. Uh, it, it's, is, is that just a standard wooden deck with a, with a rail or what, what are you anticipating there? It would most likely be a pressure treated deck. Um, we we'll still have a lot of details to work out in terms of grading, uh, any railings, any, yeah. uh, any sitting that may go on there, how the trees worked around the deck. Um, if, there are, if there are steps, we we'll probably have places for large planters on the outside to add a little bit more color to the area. The uh, abutters have expressed concern about the entrance facing their building. There's a way in which uh, either architecturally through that deck or through landscaping that there could be a sense of enclosure uh, around that deck uh, with a gateway coming through where the ramp is indicated, at least if they were to look out their window, if there's no buffer on their property, which again you'd have to be past the parking at that point, the front or that side door would not be quite as prominent from their window. I suppose it would be possible to add a, a fence or some other, you know, some more vertical plant material over here. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about, Tom? Yeah, even a, an arbor entrance or something like that with a with some a hedge or, or, or an ornamental fence or something that, well, uh, actually your architect did something down at the end of India Street uh, that screened that parking lot, which was quite, uh, quite nice. Is the architect here? But that's, they have, a, they have a, some, I believe it's oriental in design, has a nice uh, opening and that sort of thing. That to me would be the only, the second best thing that 
I mean, that's the only other issue relative to the, uh, the buffer. Um, the issue of the location of the, of the parking uh, with respect to the Johnsons, the space the, coming in off the driveway, um, I guess what I would say is that the driveway starts at uh, Shore Road and goes as far as the first parking space. And then everything almost be from there, whether it's on, on the Johnson's property or your property, becomes maneuvering uh, space for uh, parking. And then, of course, they, they have a driveway that continues on toward their new garage. Uh, I, I think having to eliminate that is uh, this. I, I think there are other ways of approaching that prior without having to eliminating it, including buffering. Lastly, the issue of odor. Uh, I have been to Hersey, Pennsylvania. I've also been uh, parking in the old port where the breweries now have the wonderful hop smell and uh, have wondered with all those people down in the old port by, by all the microbreweries and the breweries uh, who were minding their own business and these wonderful uh, home industries came in and all of a sudden changed the air quality overnight. Um, some people love that smell, other people don't like it as much. And I think the issue that was brought up, it's not the issue of the, the quality of the smell or whether it's the best cooking in the world, it's, it's the fact that it's constant uh, for if we start at 10 in the morning cooking lunch all the way through say 9 or 10 in the evening. Um, what type of what, what type of exhaust fans do you have, or what type of measures are there that could help to control that? Uh, let me, as, as an example, when I come across a bridge and drive down Broadway, I can smell with certain wind conditions and on damp days I can smell Wendy's. I uh, used to be able to smell, um, you know, some of the restaurants that have more of the fried food stuff. Um, but... Um. General question. Well, I'll I think try the issue, the issue here answers. is that you're in the town center, but you're also between or among several residences. So there's, I think this is a, an issue that's been brought up by the butters that at least should be given more than just lip service. I think we should have a, I would like to see some response. Uh, I'm, I don't mean to say lip, lip service, but I don't want to brush over it. I, I would like to have a response from whomever is designing your exhaust system or whatever contractor is, is uh, going to bid on it as to what type of controls are there to prevent the odors from, uh, whether it's a simple exhaust that would allow all odors to be released or whether there's some way of filtering that to uh, buffer it in a residential neighborhood. Yeah, we thought long and hard about it, ways to give examples of what it might smell like and thought, well, Spurwent Country Kitchen, for example, is getting close to the cottage concept but not really the same food. Plus, you can't really go ask them to have the planning board come over and sniff what it's like when they're cooking. Um, and so we did um, preliminarily do what you were you were asking about, and basically what the um, engineer said. Until we define exactly what our menus are going to be, they couldn't really give us a, um, a definition of what the exact um, excess fans would be. But I'm sure we can come up with something that will um, heighten your comfort level in terms of the type of significant um, exhaust system we'll have. I do need to say, though, once again, for the record, that odor is not on the um, site plan criteria, but we will um, go ahead and provide that to you. Okay. I might be able to find a way to tie that in in terms of impact on the butters and all of those things. I think that's... Uh, uh, again, I have no trouble. What's, I think it's a wonderful... Uh, the, the site design uh, is... Is, is excellent, the, uh, the amenities, the walks, the, the landscaping, uh, the idea of the lighting being softened in the trees, the building design I think is terrific. Um, but again, it's this unfortunate situation or unusual situation where you're among several abutters and I would really like to see <coughs> um, um, the abutters working together and try to deal with this issue of buffering. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. McNichols. The uh, site walk revealed to the members of the uh, board that almost anything would be an improvement over what is uh, currently there. The scout house uh, is really in deplorable condition and is, presents an eyesore. 
this is an ambitious uh, project, and it is a definite improvement. There's two points on which I don't have a problem, and I'm going to address those first. The stormwater runoff, I'm satisfied that uh, the material that's been presented to the board, that is not a significant problem. That is it's not a real problem. The light pollution, I think, is adequately handled uh, by the uh, uh, minimal lighting that's going to be used in the trees. Again, I don't have the uh, picture, as Mr. Emery uh, doesn't have, of the particular light fixture. We can bring it tonight. But I don't think that that's going to be a problem. I think the serious problem I'm having is uh, summed up, I think, in uh, what Mrs. Johnson said, that the project's really too large for the lot. I have a particular problem with the five parking spaces on the Johnson side. I think that uh, the Johnson should not be required to put a buffer on their own property. I'm not sure that uh, I have no idea of the economics of the situation, whether it's economic to downsize the restaurant and remove those five parking spaces or not. But in its uh, present posture, I have a serious problem with the uh, adverse impact on the Johnson property next door. And that's the only problem I have uh, with the project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ralph. David or Nancy? Any further questions? Go ahead, David. I have one question that uh, when we did the site walk, uh, we talked about the north facing end of the parking lot and that there would be some consideration of possibly putting a fence. Uh, your plans show Ragoza. Uh, Rose is in that area, um, but I don't think that in the winter time or in the, in the beginning of the project would be adequate to eliminate the headlights facing the north side. And there was some discussion of, rather than a guardrail, put a fence in there. And I would be interested in seeing that as an as a option other than the guardrail. Sorry, we're mumbling back here, but we, um, I wasn't at the site walk, but I understand um, Paul and Reverend noticed it, talk about it to some extent. And part of the problem is, is the, the severe drop-off afterwards and that the fence didn't make sense there for that reason. And also aesthetically, it, just, it didn't achieve enough to make sense to, to put it there. We can certainly play with sight lines again to see if um, for some reason it should go in. Do you want to? This might be one of those fine-tuning things. Uh, let's put the guardrail up. Let's see what it looks like from a distance of 225 feet through the woods. If we need to add some additional fencing, you know, maybe it would just be a low section of fence rather than a six-foot high fence, just enough to, to cut the headlights down. I don't think it needs to be six feet high, no, but I, no. think, you know, I think if you had an SUV in there and the headlights were four feet off the ground, somebody turns them on with high beams and... Uh, at 9 o'clock at night, it does affect the neighbors, and I think that's something that you should yeah. be concerned with. Well, well, we'll take a look at it once we get to the point of constructing it. I, I, I hate to put up a, you know, another fence right there, because I think the, the view from here looking out to the woods is going to be quite delightful. Um, I think that would be compromised by putting this fence up if it wasn't necessary. I, I have one other issue that I think, and I just want to reemphasize this. It's been brought up twice already tonight, but... It is an ambitious project, and that as I look at it, um, the patrons that are going to use this restaurant are not going to know the boundaries of the property line, and that I think the, that you need to look closely at some of the reasons why your patrons would not understand that boundary and make sure that you uh, address that issue uh, especially on the north end. Um, I see people backing out of there and backing on the Johnson's property, and I think that is an important buffer area that you need to address. And I'd be concerned about that before I would uh, go any further on approval on this project. Thank you, David. 
Nancy? I didn't even raise my hand. You were next. <laughs> but I did want to say a few words. Um, I really want to compliment you on your design. It's very creative, and I wish I could be more supportive of it. Um, my concern is traffic. While we were at the site, um, there were about six or seven cars piled up at the corner of Shore Road and Ocean House Road, or Route 77. Um, <clears throat> also, I do basketry at uh, the, um, uh, the little house that the town acquired. It's sort of a clubhouse and on Shore Road, and I've seen the cars come whiz around from Route 77 down Shore Road. I mean, you can scarcely sometimes get out of, of that crossroad that um, leads to the back of the, um, the town hall. I don't understand why Mr. Bray is so sanguine about the traffic situation at that corner. Um, I know the town has decided not to have lights there. Um, even Mr. Bray says that he thinks that the lights would be necessary. Um, if, if your project went through. So I'm very concerned about that, and particularly where there are some children in the it, directly in the neighborhood. Um, so that's one concern. Also, the noise <clears throat> that's bound to be at a restaurant and the smells um, that you may not be able to control uh, 100%, um, I think would not be a good neighbor um, for the people who are living in the vicinity. And I, too, think the lot is too small. You have a delightful um, plan, and I appreciate the flowers the gardens, and the whole plan is really very nice. But I think the parking is going to be problematic. Uh, a too small space, really. Um, so those are my concerns. May I respond a couple sure. of them just briefly? Um, in terms of the traffic, it is frustrating um, the whole that whole intersection there, but I do need to point out that in terms of the site plan criteria, we have to provide a traffic study and find, and that traffic study needs to show that we fall within the bounds of the um, ability for, I forget what all the fancy words are, but basically that it's all right for the amount of traffic we'd be generating, and that has been found. I also know that we're in a situation that the ordinance deals with directly where, in fact, Unfortunately, the way that growth has occurred in the area, it may be best to have a, a, a stoplight there. However, because we can't control that situation, again, um, the planning board, from what I understand, is not able to deny us um, our permit based on traffic problems because the town hasn't gotten the, um, the, the traffic light in there. Um, just so it's, I had to clarify that. The other thing is on noise. I, again, all I can say is that, that um, the Town Center allows restaurants. It's a permitted use. In fact, it's permitted use up to 75 seats, although obviously that couldn't fit on the site. Other permitted uses include a gas station, just like Jonesy's. Um, and that's why the ordinance has the certain sound levels. And we have to abide by those levels. So there's, um, so that again, what we are doing is we're meeting the criteria of, what, um, of the ordinance and what people worked hard on to, to put in the Town Center requirements. Chairman, I have a motion. Yes, Mr. McNichols. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of 1231 Associates, Paul Woods and Helen Mother, 
its principles, a site plan review of a proposed 40-seat restaurant to be located at 1251 Shore Road in the Scout House be tabled. Board members, we have a motion before us. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. Is there any further discussion of the motion before the board? All those in favor, please Excuse signify. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Uh, Emery. Yes, I, I mm -hmm. have a couple of comments. Um, and maybe I could hold these off until the final vote, but I think it's helpful to the applicant that the applicant knows before they have to re uh, prepare or revise their materials what's on the board's mind. One of the issues that keeps coming up is the adverse impact on the Johnson property. And as I sit here, I'm trying to, trying to weigh that impact against the fact that this is a town center. There's a shared uh, parking or access concept here. And ironically, the Johnsons um, are using the driveway that is on the applicant's property. And keeping in mind that the Johnsons had their own driveway and took an enormous, uh, I'm not going to call it gamble, but we're at the card cutting edge with the town and, and, uh, and went to the shared driveway concept. I don't know what's an, a reasonable adverse impact in terms of what the Johnsons can reasonably anticipate in terms of the parking that's oriented toward their house. Uh, I don't know if they have apartments that face the parking spaces behind their house or if they have aspects of their business that face parking behind their house. One of the things I see that may be a little different here, it may ultimately not be that different, but at least in terms of this restaurant use, is the hour of day. It's reasonable to expect some peace and quiet in a residential district or mis mixed use district as this is, but with abutting residences. Um, so I would very much like to see the Johnsons d further discuss with the applicant the idea of buffering. Um, and um, either that or just, I, I think I may have heard today that tonight that that's, uh, that's not going to be a deal, that that, that that isn't going to happen. The issue is regardless of the buffering, they don't want to lose parts of the